Today on our 2013 Chrysler Town & Country, we're going to be doing a test fit of the Curt Premium 4. This is going to be your hanging style 4 bike rack. It's going to be part number C18064. This comes with your 2-inch shank for your 2-inch hitches only, and it is a nice tilting model. As you can see, we've already got a bike on here, so you can see what it would look like and how it would fit once it's all complete. We're going to start off by getting a few measurements. That way you know what your tolerances are for your vehicle. Our closest distance is going to be right here on the front of the side of the T-handle and thumb screw to the bumper at about 4 inches. Our overall distance that we've added to the vehicle to the back of the cradle arms is going to be about 31 inches. And our ground clearance on the back side is going to be about 10 and 3 quarter inches to the bottom side of the shank. Looking up top, you'll see multiple straps. The straps on top are going to be your frame straps to keep the bike from bouncing up and down while you're going down the road. Go ahead and remove those frame straps. Next, you'll see your anti-sway strap. This is going to be the strap that connects to your down tube and seat post to prevent the bike from swinging from front to back as you're driving down the road as well. Let's go ahead and undo that strap. This will always be the first strap that you're going to put on when you do put on your bike. Go ahead and let's go ahead and take off the bike. That way we can show you the, the tilt and stowaway position. Once you get done taking your bike off, you always want to make sure that you place the straps back in the holders so you don't lose them and so they're not dangling around. It is a very nice malleable rubber that's easy to use and easy to manipulate. Up front you'll see a U-shaped clip right here. Go ahead and undo that from the pin. Remove the pin and lower down the cradle arms. This will be the away position. Reinsert the pin and the clip for safety. That way you make sure that it doesn't come off while you're going down the road. All right, on the backhand side here, we're going to give our overall distance again. Since we've changed it from that 31 inches, now down to about 11 to the back side of the shank. This will be nice and stowed away. Up front, you're going to have your thumb screw. We're going to go ahead and loosen up that thumb screw to release the tension on the pin and the upright center mast here. Go ahead and remove the clip, pull the pin, and lift up on the T-handle, which will allow us to put it down in the tilt position in that rear hatch to gain access to put anything in or take anything out that we may have forgotten. Once you got everything in or out, go ahead and close that up and secure it. From there, we'll return the rack back to the upright position, placing that T-handle back in that pin hole there. Replace the pin and the clip, then tighten up that thumb screw to put tension back on that bolt so you're not jiggling around here. All right, on the bottom side, you're going to have your anti-rattle bolt. You're going to have a clip as well. We're going to remove that clip and we're going to loosen up that anti-rattle bolt so you can see what it would be like if you didn't have that in place. We're going to loosen it up to where it's just finger tight so you can see what kind of sway, rattle, and wobble that you would have if you didn't have that in place. It's going to prevent a lot of that. As you can see, the rack is moving by itself and the vehicle is hardly moving at all. But as soon as we tighten that back up, you're going to notice a significant difference after the shank gets pulled against the side of the receiver and tied into the vehicle's suspension. Now once that's tight, you can see the only thing moving now is the vehicle and not the, not the rack. Go ahead and reattach that clip and you're ready to hit the road with your all new Kurt Premium 4 hand style 4 bike rack, part number C18064, 2013 Chrysler Town & Country. Let's see how it does on our test course. Here you see it out on our test course. First is the slalom, which shows the side-to-side -side action to simulate turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next are the alternating speed bumps, which show you the twisting action such as hitting a pothole, road debris, or going over a curb. Finally, we will finish with the solid speed bumps, which show the up and down action to simulate a parking garage 
or coming out of a driveway.